Good afternoon and uh, welcome to the closing press conference for the IEA's 2022 ministerial meeting. We're delighted uh, to be here in Paris um, and to welcome our global uh, audience online. Uh, we are joined today uh, by our ministerial chair, the U.S. Secretary of Energy, Jennifer Granholm, and by our executive director, Dr. Fatih Birol. We will first hear from uh, Dr. Birol, who will share his views about uh, our two-day event, and then uh, from Secretary, Secretary Granholm. And of course, we will have an opportunity to take some questions from the room. I will also direct you to our website, where we just released our ministerial communique for our event. And with that, I would like to turn the floor to Dr. Birol. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much, Jet. So, dear colleagues, we just finished the, our uh, biannual uh, ministerial uh, meeting of the International Energy Agency. Uh, I would say it was the, in my view, uh, the best ministerial meeting we ever had. And uh, my thanks go to uh, our chair, United States uh, Secretary of Energy, Jennifer Granholm. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair for guiding us through this uh, ministerial meeting and uh, also conducting the ministerial meeting in the most effective way. Uh, the meeting uh, was, of course, uh, very much uh, uh, at the meeting we discussed a lot about the impact of the Russian invasion of Ukraine and its uh, possible implications on the energy markets, especially oil and gas markets, and what uh, we can do uh, all together as the International Energy Agency family. And uh, here, I was very impressed with the unity and determination of the IEA member countries, giving a bold, nimble, and a cool-headed response to Russia's aggression. I would like to stop uh, here and uh, once again uh, to uh, thank uh, Madam uh, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Secretary Granholm, for your uh, leadership. And uh, perhaps I will uh, pass the floor to you to share some of the uh, results of our uh, ministerial meeting. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. F Dr. Berol. I think it's just... Um such an honor to be sharing the stage with you because you've done such a phenomenal job in teeing up this moment at this extraordinary time where the IEA is really re-envisioning itself to be the IEA 3.0 uh, to include this push um, and necessity to push toward clean energy, to accelerate the transition to clean energy, even as we must increase supply around the world of oil and gas to be able to address the shortfall uh, caused by Putin's invasion of Ukraine. We were, um, we were blessed in the last meeting to have um, the Ukrainian energy minister, Herman Haloshenko, join us virtually. And his team has been here for the past two days as well to hear from them directly about what they would like from us uh, in the IEA, but across the world to demonstrate in support of them. Clearly, this um, body, the 31 ministers now, we expanded to include Lithuania as an official member as we're growing the IEA membership, including not just the actual members uh, and member body, but also the associate members and accession members, uh, also including um, new members to make this body much larger and stronger. We all, um, I think every, almost everyone spoke in this last um, session, and everyone was united in condemning, obviously, Vladimir Putin's war, but also united in seeing how we can do what we can to both increase supply, adopt efficiency measures, but also this transition to clean and how we can accelerate it as fast as we possibly can. This is um, a group of countries who are utterly sincere and utterly determined to make sure that this transition occurs as quickly as possible. Some had goals uh, years into the future of doing this transition. Everyone is accelerating. And so um, we are working as hard, you know, we're working together, but we're also working individually in our nations. And I'm just grateful for the guidance and the 
uh, expertise, the analysis that the IEA gives us with as we all make individual decisions about which path we are taking to make sure that we both achieve uh, the acceleration toward clean. We do what we can to be efficient and we do what we can to increase supply so that our um, those who have been very reliant on Russian fossil fuels um, have other places to turn. I'll take questions from the room. If you could please uh, let me know if you need to ask a question. Okay. We're going to take them by three and then give a chance. And if you could identify yourself and your media and who the question is for. Thank you. Grant Smith from Bloomberg News. Uh, could I ask a question to um, both um, Secretary Grant Home and to um, Director Birol um, with regard to the, um, the, the response to the, the energy implications of the the, the Russian in invasion. To um, Secretary Granholm, uh, can you give any uh, detail on the talks to provide Europe with uh, US uh, LNG to help them uh, diversify away from uh, Russian gas? Can you say anything, for example, about the, the volumes involved or how this might work, and as well whether there's any uh, consideration of doing something similar with US um, oil supplies? Um, to um, uh, Executive Director um, Biro, could I ask, um, uh, in terms of uh, the IA response, do you um, uh, uh, how, do you think there's a need at this point for another emergency stockpile release? And has there been any discussion amongst IEA members of sanctions that would directly target Russian oil and gas? Thank you very much. Uh, another question, and then we'll. To the Good afternoon, F Fabrice uh, Nodelonglois from Le, Le Figaro. The question is to uh, both of you. Um, what's, according to you, the significance of uh, Vladimir Putin's request to uh, get payments uh, for oil and gas in ruble? Um, you know, what, what's the meaning, according to you, uh, and what is your reaction to, to this request? Thank you. And we have a question in the middle over there. Hi. Uh, my name is Shinya Wake. I'm the uh, reporter from the Asahi Shimbun Japanese newspaper. Um, it's quite surprising that um, I believe there's no mention about Russia or Ukraine in your communique. Uh, would you explain the reason why you didn't put it? Thank you. Let me, let me answer a couple of those and you can... Um, First of all, um, with respect to the discussions that are uh, happening right now um, regarding LNG, the United States, et cetera, I'm going to allow the president to make that um, announcement, um, and that will be soon. Um, with respect to oil supplies, we have called for an increase in our domestic oil supplies. Obviously, the oil is traded on a global market. Um, the estimates are now, I don't know if the um, IEA has different estimates, but that it looks like the supplies will be, there's a response by the oil and gas market. It looks like um, oil supplies will increase by about a million barrels per year. It, at least our energy information agency has has uh, a short-term energy outlook that has up, been updated to include those increases. Um, that is um, not all that will be required, clearly. Um, there's, there's more to be able to do. Um, and then just with respect to uh, the emergency uh, stockpiles, I, I think that was actually probably to you, but I'll just say that all, I think um, these are d ongoing discussions and all those tools are certainly on the table. If I can add a few things to Madam Secretary's answers. Uh, first of all, uh, our release, 63 million barrels, uh, was an initial release. Our member countries and the, uh, the Secretariat uh, are closely monitoring the markets. And uh, in addition to this initial release, if our member countries decide so, we are immediately ready to act and release additional volumes uh, to the markets. One shouldn't forget that 63 million barrels were only 4% of all the stocks uh, we have. And in case of uh, a, a, a need, if our countries decide that there is a need, we will be uh, happy immediately to act and 
bring the volumes uh, to the markets. And I can tell you, uh, repay, uh, answering your second question, all the member countries came up with plans, policies, immediate measures how they are going to reduce Russian oil and gas. Different policies, different measures, different timelines, but one single target reducing radically Russian oil and gas imports. Figaro's question, uh, 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 why uh, this uh, uh, the rumor about the fact that uh, Putin wants the, uh, the, uh, the importers pay in ruble, if it is true, I would consider it as a, an, uh, one of the uh, other uh, security threats made by uh, Russia. Uh, the third question uh, in our uh, about uh, mentioning the Russia uh, invasion in our press release, uh, you will uh, see that the Russia and invasion and the uh, the response from our member countries are uh, duly uh, reflected. And I would say the communique was negotiated back in early February. So. Many thanks. We have a second round of questions. Hi, uh, Perrine Moutard from Le Monde. Uh, Dr. Birol, you've said that you were worried that the climate transition would be another victim of the, of the, of the war. Um, can you detail why you are worried? Um, what signs or maybe concrete decisions are worrying you? Thank you. Thank you, Jianghua from CCTV. I just want to ask a question about the release. You mentioned uh, the 9 March, Mr. Bureau, uh, Dr. Bureau, uh, about this first initial release. And what is the condition uh, we should accomplish uh, for the second release? This is my first question. And, and uh, uh, the second question is about the payment in ruble. Uh, have, do you have that in your discussion? And what kind of a solution you suggest to the member countries? Thank you. Many thanks. And maybe we can take uh, questions from the Zoom as well. Um, uh, one from Zach Coleman, perhaps to Secretary Granholm. This is uh, Zach from Politico. How concerned are you that decisions to respond to this immediate crisis might lock in infrastructure or strategies that would put climate change goals out of reach? Um, and then there's one from Marianne Lavelle from Inside Climate News. In addition to the recent increase in oil prices, there has been recent increase in volatility in global metals markets. How do you anticipate that affecting the advance of the electric vehicle future? Perhaps this one for, for the ED, for the executive director. Thank you. Um, so with respect to the last uh, uh, questions, um, uh, I think there's always concern about increasing infrastructure that would lock in problems um, related to greenhouse gas emissions. There's no doubt about that. But there is also a flip side to this, which is that it this accelerates the movement away from fossil fuels, at least unabated fossil fuels, and the movement toward technologies that do that, whether those technologies are carbon capture and sequestration, or everybody talked about those technologies, green hydrogen, clean hydrogen, um, obviously wind and solar are obvious ones, but every single country has their own unique um, potential to contribute to the clean energy economy. So whether it's through technologies to abate the hard to abate sectors or even just natural gas uh, on its own or the technologies associated with renewable energy, this, there wasn't a single country that didn't talk about how they were going to accelerate that. So this moment, we can do two things at once, which is to increase supply as well as to increase our the technologies to, uh, to abate natural gas and um, obviously push toward 
electric vehicles, which gets to the second question. I mean, one of the reasons why the International Energy Agency was so important for, at this moment is because we created an effort surrounding critical minerals and materials. We don't want supply chain bottlenecks to prevent us from being able to electrify the transportation sector. And so making sure that we've got sources for those critical minerals that are sustainably extracted and processed is a big part of what the going forward work will be of, uh, of the countries here, uh, members here at the, uh, at the IEA. Thank you very much, Madam Secretary. Uh, the first question from uh, Le Monde, uh, the Yes, uh, you are right. We should be very careful. Uh, I believe the climate change, fight against climate change, shouldn't be a victim of Russia's uh, invasion. Uh, and uh, what uh, we have discussed, uh, and all the countries were uh, supportive of this, we are uh, in a turning point in the energy pol policy making in the history. But the issues, which direction the energy uh, system, global energy system will turn, in the right direction or in the wrong direction. As Madam Chair uh, mentioned now and mentioned uh, uh, several times uh, in the last two days, we have to make sure that the energy security concerns that all the countries have today should be an additional driver to reach our clean energy goals. So this is uh, what all the countries have uh, uh, agreed. And as you can uh, read in our uh, communique and the press release, countries uh, task the International Energy Agency to help the uh, governments uh, around the world to, to help them to map out the, to reach their uh, net zero goals. Uh, when will the, what are the conditions to have a second uh, release of oil stocks? This will depend on the, uh, the our uh, member countries' uh, agreement, how they read the markets, uh, uh, how they identify the supply disruptions. Are they uh, uh, important enough uh, to uh, trigger the, uh, uh, our uh, coordinated stock release? Uh, but I can tell you that the VC market is being very tight, and we are getting one after another uh, uh, important negative news uh, from uh, the global energy markets. The last one being the uh, the real uh, issue with the CPC uh, uh, pipeline. The ruble issue I mentioned to you. This is yet another uh, uh, threat, whether or not uh, it will be. Uh, uh, if we get a response from our member countries, we have to wait and see. Final point on the metals. Uh, uh, we are very uh, happy and thankful to uh, 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 Madam Secretary, Madam Chair, that the uh, IEA member uh, countries have decided, in addition to the existing mandates in terms of addressing the oil and gas security uh, issues globally, they have uh, tasked the IEA uh, to consider the critical minerals, their availability uh, as another energy security topic that IEA should uh, look after. I am thankful to our member uh, countries for their trust and also uh, widening our energy security mandate by including uh, critical minerals. Many thanks. Um, I think this concludes our session. Thank you very much for your questions and for your attendance. And